Take two, this time the microphone's on. Uh, the Joe Biden administration is doing something despicable and it's using the, uh, the suicide numbers for uh, the country as well as, the, the more particular, the people in the military. Uh, as we know, there's uh, 21 a day, 21 veterans a day tragically choose to end their life. And I'll tell you, um, it's disgusting what he's doing. Sit by and watch this episode to learn more. The sponsor of today's video is Shall Not Comply. Uh, Shall Not Comply does all of the official guns and gadgets, shirts and patches. I'll have a link down below and in the pinned comment that'll bring you to my store. Your purchases help support the channel, whether it's guns and gadgets gear or anything else on the store. And uh, I humbly thank you for your support. Uh, if you like hoodies, uh, this is the best hoodie I have. It's the softest. It's the most comfortable. It looks great. This is their Shall Not Be Infringed hoodie. There's only a couple left, and I think once they're gone, they're gone. So if you want them, link down below, pin comment. But let's talk about what the Joe Biden administration is doing to, to use the deaths of veterans to achieve some more back down, back door gun control. On the screen is what the uh, Biden administration released on Tuesday. And you can see it uh, says the Biden administration takes steps to prevent suicide, including by promoting the safe storage of firearms. Now, before I jump into that, I'm gonna tell you that this plan calls for federal agencies, including the Department of Defense, the Homeland Security, uh, Justice Department, Health and Human Services, Veterans Affairs, and the Department of Transportation's Emergency Medical Service Office uh, to create public awareness campaigns to encourage safer storage of guns and training of counselors, crisis responders, and others. Now, I've read this whole thing, and I'll have links down below if you want to read it yourself, uh, but it, there's a lot of, like, they're going to create propaganda, um, targeted ways to get the message across, and they're going to promote it on Insta, you know, on all the social media and search engines as well. But I want to tell you about the worst part of it, uh, and it's the part that the fluff tries to cover, and that's uh, here on the screen. It says, promoting best practices for federal firearms dealers, including customer education regarding safety and security of firearms owners. ATF will issue a best practices guide for, to all federal firearms dealers to remind them, like they forgot all of a sudden, but to remind them about the important steps that they are legally required to take and additional steps they are encouraged to take to keep their customers and communities safe. These guidelines include materials for federal firearms licensees to distribute to customers to help them better understand their legal obligations as firearms owners, as well as practical steps they can take to facilitate the safe storage of firearms and keep firearms out of the hands of people prohibited from possessing them. Number two is a summary of the Department of Justice's zero tolerance approach to willful violations of the Gun Control Act and implementing regulations that put public safety at risk. Absent extraordinary circumstances that would need to be justified by the ATF director, ATF will seek to revoke the licenses of dealers the first time that they violate federal law by willfully, one, transferring a firearm to a prohibited person, two, failing to run a required background check, three, falsifying records such as firearms transaction form, four, failing to respond to an ATF tracing request, and five, refusing to permit ATF to conduct an inspection in violation of the law. I'm not an FFL. I don't know all the FFLs in the country. That would be very, almost impossible. But I think that most of them are honorable in their business, obviously, because it's very regulated. I don't think they're out there uh, violating the Gun Control Act uh, you know, willfully, and willfully is really hard to prove in court. Um, but the problem is the people that lie on 4473s. There's thousands of people who do it a year. Very few of them are ever prosecuted, uh, including Hunter Biden. I mean, so if Hunter Biden were to lie on his 4473 in order to buy a, a revolver, which he later threw into a trash can, um, he's a prohibited person. He did it willfully, knowingly. So in this case, they would try to say that the FFL should lose their license for this? Come on. It makes no, no sense. And also, this what they're using the Department of Defense uh, numbers for is they're saying that if uh, an FFL sells a gun to a veteran and they end up using it uh, for a suicide, uh, then they could be in hot water for that as well. Now, there's two more bullet points that I want to tell you about. And then the surprise that is uh, the Joe Biden administration really trying to stick it to us American uh, gun owners. A reminder regarding FFL's obligations to run background checks for firearms transfers and the unlawfulness for selling to her prohibited persons. And the last one, recommendations on how to implement safety and security measures to secure firearm inventory, including use of alarm and video surveillance systems to prevent firearm theft and loss. And just about every FFL I know has had to put in a safe, uh, video, uh, bars on the windows, and a security system. So again, this is a lot of fluff for stuff that already takes place. 
and the pamphlets and the information stuff, a lot of them already do that. They'll hand out information. Maybe that's regulated by state, but that's nothing really new. Here is the piece de resistance from the Biden administration. These actions build on the Biden administration's previous gun violence prevention actions. Earlier this year, the Justice Department issued model extreme risk protection order legislation for states. Extreme risk protection order laws are another strategy for reducing access to lethal means, allowing family members or law enforcement to petition for a court order temporarily barring people in crisis from accessing firearms if they present a danger to themselves or others. The president continues to urge Congress to pass an appropriate national red flag law, as well as legislation incentivizing states to pass their own versions of these laws. So, pushing Congress again and going to bribe the states that don't have these to try to put them on the books. Um, now, I don't think the Biden administration is going forward at all, uh, especially after the elections here this week. But I'll just say the folks at Every Town for Gun Safety are really happy that he's doing this. So that tells you uh, what you need to know. The government is also going to create maps for people to utilize where they can find locations where they can secure their firearms outside of their homes. I'm going to put this on screen. It says the Department of Defense's annual calendar year suicide report released in September shows that 580 military personnel, including 384 active duty service members, died by suicide in 2020. That's tragic. The suicide rate among active duty service members has statistically increased since 2015. There's been no statistical change for reservists and National Guard members during the same time frame, according to the report. What he's not saying is that his decision to withdraw from Afghanistan um, caused many of our veterans uh, to to have a bad, a rough time, to second guess what they have done for the last 20 plus years. He and his decisions caused that, nobody else's. Um, there, you know, if you've heard the saying that some gave all, tragically, uh, but all gave some is legit. And there's a lot of guys and gals who have come back from war that uh, might not have been injured physically, but has some issues to deal with. Um, but I will say that most of the guys and gals who come back live exemplary lives and are much better than some citizens uh, as far as you know living productive lives. So again, Biden uh, uses the numbers that there you know two thirds of firearms death deaths are suicides, and that you know. 21 uh, veterans a day are, are committing suicide. So the government must act and try to make it harder for people to get guns uh, because, you know, the criminals will magically just follow law if we, if we push this one and this is going to be the one. And I think it's despicable that he's using, you know, the, uh, the blood of the veterans who have tragically um, lost their lives by suicide. Uh, I think it's despicable that he's doing this. Um, now, if you want to help veterans, I suggest you do so in any way you can. I'm going to publicly, again, uh, give my wife a shout out. What you see here are 72 uh, winter hats that she knit, uh, knitted uh, by herself. We donated those to the local uh, veteran shelter here in, in Worcester, Massachusetts yesterday. And now she's over 200 hats that she has donated. And we've also donated other things and done other, thing, uh, other ways to help. And I, I don't, I'm not looking for accolades, but that's how you help, guys and gals. You know, do you know do what you can to help them where they need help in the immediate and with that said if i know you personally and you are a veteran or not if you are contemplating suicide uh call me i will always be there day or night i'll pick up the phone i will be there to help you uh, if you just need somebody to talk to uh, or if you're alone you know drinking alone in the dark Give me that call, guys and gals, uh, seriously. And I, I expect each and every viewer of mine, you know, the new Sons of Liberty, I expect you guys to do that for your friends, your community as well. And uh, if you do need somebody to talk to, help is available as well professionally. If you need somebody to talk to, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 1-800-273-8255. It's available 24 hours a day. Again, I am one who thinks that we need to do more for our veterans. And uh, if I can help out in any way, I will. With that said, guys and gals, uh, Please consider subscribing to Guns and Gadgets if you want Second Amendment news, no matter where it happens on a daily basis. Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. Uh, until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun to keep you, yourself, your friends, your family, your community safe. And I'll see you on the next one. Please check out Shall Not Comply and scoop these up because I think once they're gone, they're not coming back. Take care, everybody.